I'd like to thank Sohan for inviting me to give this inaugural lecture on Nussel's Blue Earth Project. My topic is global assessment on biodiversity, conservation, and environment. My name is Medina Kadiri, and I'm from the University of Benin, Nigeria. I am going to go through some preambles, biodiversity types, some statistics on current status of global biodiversity, threats to biodiversity, solutions to biodiversity loss, environmental degradation, and some conclusion. Biodiversity simply refers to the variety and variability of all groups of living things and their ecosystems. It is life on Earth. Biodiversity is the sum of all organisms on Earth. United Nations Convention on Biodiversity gives a comprehensive definition as the variability among living organisms from all sources, including inter alia, terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and their ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within and between species and of ecosystem. Biodiversity is multidimensional. It represents the natural or ecological capital that underpins the economy, human health, and well being. Biodiversity is a sine qua non for nature's resilience. As a diverse ecosystem, is likely to be able to withstand environmental changes compared to that which is less diverse or non-diverse. Generally, biodiversity on Earth arises from the difference between the rates of evolution and extinction. The number of species in the environment at any point in time is the balance between immigration from other environments and even emigration from the given environments, local extinction and in situ speciation, types of classification of biodiversity. Global biodiversity assessment puts biodiversity into four major components, ecological, organismic, genetic and cultural diversity. Ecological diversity refers to landscapes, ecosystems, habitats, etc. Genetic diversity includes genes, chromosomes, etc. Organismal diversity refers to the taxonomic unit to which these species are put. Example, kingdoms, phyla or division. Phyla is used for animals, while division is used for plants, families, general species, etc. Cultural diversity refers to people's relation or interaction with biodiversity. What is popularly known of biodiversity are species diversity, genetic diversity, and ecosystem diversity. What are the functions of biodiversity? Biodiversity provides numerous essential services of social, ecological and economic benefits, which Millennium Eco Assist Assessment 2005 puts in four categories, provisioning services, support services, regulation services, and cultural services. Provisioning services deals with provision of fresh water, food, shelter, holdings, ETC. Support services deals with nutrient cycling, soil formation, carbon sequestration, regulation services relate to climate regulation, air quality, flood and erosion control, water regulation, cultural services deals with the spiritual and religious use to which biodiversity is put. It also involves recreation, aesthetics, etc biodiversity versus ecosystem services. Ecosystem services denote the benefit and values derivable from nature. 
biodiversity is fundamental to ecosystem structure, functions, and services. Biodiversity is mostly a structural characteristic of the ecosystem, while the services is the functional aspect. Ecosystem integrity refers to its intactness, completeness, and integration. Ecosystem degradation causes changes in integrity. Thus, a healthy ecosystem leads to high ecological integrity and ultimately high ecosystem services. What are the various issues in biodiversity? They are as follows. Microorganisms represent Earth's most diversity and biomass. Yet macroorganisms get more attention because they are easily observable. Few data exist on the status, trends, or functional importance of microbes, invertebrates, and many plant groups, or of wild genetic diversity. Terrestrial organisms are given more prominence relative to aquatic forms. And within the terrestrial realm, forest is most considered biodiversity. Marine environment is still poorly covered in the IUCN red list. The temperate tropic dichotomy in documentation. There's more documentation in the, trop in the temperate region relative to the tropical region. How the different components of biodiversity contribute and relate to the provision of services or create resilience to environmental change is poorly understood. Multiple drivers interaction on biodiversity loss are hardly considered or at best limited. Extensive existing traditional knowledge is generally underused in decision making at all levels. Difficulty in effective regulation of global biodiversity. The valuation of biodiversity is not adequately done and does not apply globally. Global biodiversity estimation. Plants are about 450,000 species. For animals, there is no agreement yet. These estimates are based on species identified to date. Taxonomy and systematics, being very dynamic subjects, are still ongoing. There's constant naming and identification of species on regular basis. Global biodiversity distribution. Naturally, biodiversity is unevenly distributed throughout the world. Equatorial regions have higher species. Ecotomes, these are areas where habitats intermix also have higher species diversity. Ecotomes, if you have a habitat of a, um, a continuum of environmental conditions from one extreme to the other, the point at which these extremes intermix is referred to as the ecotome. Latitudinal biodiversity gradient. There's increasing biodiversity with decreasing latitude on land. That is, we have more biodiversity in the tropics compared to the poles. For many organisms like the trees, birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, insects, latitudinal gradients can be quite complex, however, for different organisms. With no latitudinal relationships in some, example, cladocerans. Latitudinal gradients are similar for genetic diversity and species richness. Global patterns of biodiversity falls into four consistent groups based on habitats, land, coastal regions, pelagic. Pelagic refers to open ocean and then deep ocean. Within these habitats, most species groups from micro to macro follow similar biogeographic patterns. Latitude per se does not account for biodiversity gradient. It is the factors mod modulating latitude that influence biodiversity. These factors are temperature, ecosystem energy flux, precipitation, ecological disturbance regime. 
global biodiversity hotspot. A biodiversity hotspot is a biogeographic region which is both a significant reservoir of biodiversity and threatened by human activities. They are the Earth's biologically richest and threatened ecoregions. They are known for their endemism, high biodiversity, vulnerability, and irreplaceability. There are 36 biodiversity hotspots in the world, and these represent 2.5% of the Earth's land surface, support more than 50% of world plant species, and nearly 45% of birds, mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. What qualifies a spot to be biodiversity hotspot? There are two conditions. One, you must have 0.5% of vascular plants as endemics, that is restricted to that region. And two, must have 30% of its original vegetation still intact. This is from Myers, 1989. This map on the right-hand side shows the global distribution of biodiversity hotspots throughout the continents. Global biodiversity hotspots and human population density. This map represents the global biodiversity hotspots and human population density. It is uh, recorded in number of people per square kilometers. The dark shaded area is the highest and they are more than 300 persons per square kilometers. From this map, it is observed that the highest population density of number of people per square kilometer is in hotspots in Japan, Himalaya, Indian Ocean Island, Southwest China Mountain, West Ghans, Sri Lanka. Endemism. Endemism refers to the restriction of a species to a defined geographic location. It could be a country, island, or some other defined area. Endemism has been reported among plants and animals. For plants, it's been reported in birches, cacti, conifers, cycad, oaks, and magnolia. And for mammals, in reptiles, amphibians, insects, birds, etc. West and Central Asia, Caribbean island, Europe generally have low endemism. Europe being the lowest among them all. Endemism is very high in Mexico, especially in conifers with 448 species. In China, most endemic endemicity is reported in, in magnolia, mainly 66, some oaks, 58, cycas, 52, birches, 51. Peru has notable endemics in cacti, 91, and this is the highest globally. South America has substantial endemic species, especially in conifers in different countries. Brazil, 201, Argentina, 95, Bolivia, 94, Chile, 58. Table two shows examples of endemic animals. They are found in various countries of the world. Example, glacier bear of Alaska, Sclater's monkey of Nigeria, amongst others. All the pictures of all these animals will be displayed at the end of this presentation. Table three indicates total endemic and threatened endemic plant species. These are computed from IUCN 2021 data. The numbers indicated in red indicate the highest number of the given group and the region. So conifers are highest uh, 
in uh, endemic plants in North and Central America, USA, South America. Cycads are highest endemic plants in East Asia, Oceania, cacti is highest in Southeast Asia. Protasia is highest in Africa. The corresponding threatened species are, all, are indicated side by side with the total threatened, uh, the total endemic species. This map shows the global pattern of endemism richness. A is vascular plants, B is vertebrate, C is amphibian, D is reptiles, E is birds, and F is mammals. The area shaded pink shows the highest regions. This is taken from Kia et al. 2009. The global pattern of endemism richness is highest in plants, reptiles, mammals in Pacific, Atlantic, and Madagascar regions, and less in these areas for vertebrates, amphibians, and birds. This map shows mangrove species richness. The top map is richness of mangrove species, and the lower one shows the proportion of threatened mangrove species in the world. The areas shaded dark brown represent the highest mangrove species richness of between 36 to 46 in number. The mangrove species richness is highest in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippine, Axis. The proportion of threatened mangrove species on the other hand is highest in Central America biodiversity loss facts. More than 20% plant species as assessed are threatened with extinction. Tropical rainforest is more threatened. Gymnosperms, uh, these are plants with naked seeds. Examples, conifers and cycads are most threatened among the plant groups. 50% of global terrestrial net primary production is currently harvested by humans. This is six times more than what it has been in the past. 35 to 40% of the world's forests have been converted to cropland and pastures. More than half of the world's largest river systems have been affected by dams. About 40% of the ocean is strongly affected by multiple drivers. IUCN 2021 indicates that only 28 species of all species groups have been fully evaluated. Some species have so little information that they are designated data deficient. Let's look at more statistics on current status of global biodiversity. Table 4 shows the percentage of threatened species with extinction. This is out of the total assessed. This is taken from IUCN 2021 data too. Amphibians 41, mammals 26, birds 13, reptiles 21, sharks and rays 37, crustaceans 28, cycads 63, conifers 34, and reef corals 33. Table five depicts the number of threatened species in each category of plants and for each region. These are computed from IUC and 2021 data. The numbers indicated in red represent the highest uh, group of threatened organisms and in, within the region. From the table, it is seen that fishes are the highest threatened group in Caribbean, Asia, Europe, Mesoamerica, North Africa. Plants are highest threatened in Southeast Asia, Oceania, Sub-Saharan Africa, North and South America. 
the order of threats of region is sub-Saharan sub Africa is the highest, followed by South East Asia, South America, Oceania, Europe, and Antarctic region. A global overview of the organism is in this order. Plants, greater than fishes, then other in, invertebrates, birds, mammals, mollusks, reptiles, amphibians, fungi, and chromis. Table six shows the countries with the highest threatened species in the region. Caribbean island is Haiti with 419 total number of threatened species. East Asia, China with 1,333 species. North Asia, Russia, 305 species. South and South East Asia, Indonesia, 2,030 species. Europe, Spain, 792 species. Mesoamerica, Mexico, 2,207 species. South America, Ecuador, 2,601 species. North Africa, Morocco, 265 species. Sub-Saharan Africa, Madagascar, 3,607 species. And Oceania is Australia, 1,774 species. These total number of threatened species are distributed among the various groups of all plants and animals as indicated on the right hand column. Soil biodiversity is not left out of the threat. This map shows the global distribution of threats to soil biodiversity. This is taken from Living Planet Report 2018. The areas Shaded green are low, very low to low. Yellow is moderate. And then orange is high to very high, depending on the intensity of the coloration. From this map, it is observed that soil biodiversity threat is moderate to very high everywhere in the world, except in Canada, Northern Russia, North Africa, and part of Guyana. This figure, also taken from Living Planet Report 2018, shows the relative frequency of major biodiversity threats by taxonomy groups of animals. Habitat destruction affected birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians by 50% and fishes by 28%. Exploitation affected fishes by 50% and then mammals to a lesser extent by 30%. Others like invasive species, climate change, pollution made smaller contribution. This shows the global distribution of harmful alien species in coastal ecoregion. This is taken from Molna et al. 2008. The area shaded brown is the highest in terms of harmful alien species from 31 to 56 in number. From this map, it is observed that harmful alien species is highest in the west coast of USA, Western Europe, and Middle East. Aquatic biodiversity. Water covers about 71% of the Earth's surface. Oceans hold 96.5% of Earth's water and fresh water 3.5%. Aquatic biodiversity is also threatened. Marine and freshwater environments are threatened by the following factors, over exploitation, habitat destruction, aquaculture poor management, pollution, invasive species, climate change, and additionally, the marine environment, ocean acidification, in addition to uh, those mentioned uh, above, and hydrocarbon extraction, marine biodiversity. The marine environment comprises many organisms, 
among which are microalgae, which constitute about 90% primary producers of the vast oceans of the world. And these remove up to 50% carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Macroalgae are present in underwater, as underwater forests like kelps. And these remove more than 30% of carbon dioxide. Marine areas have protected areas throughout the world, and they are in five groups. Group one is located in subtropical area. Group two is tropical region. Group three is in the Mediterranean. Group four is tropical coral reefs, mangroves, and sea grass ecosystem specifically. Group five is exclusively located in the Baltic Sea and Hunsi Bay area, both of which are brackish. These areas are subjected to threats. Groups one to four are threatened by ocean acidification, and group five is threatened by anthropogenic pollution. This is taken from Patello et al. 2015. This map shows the global marine species assessment for Ma uh, for marine uh, fishes and all marine organisms on the IUCN red list. This indicates that the number of fishes and other organisms on the red list increased exponentially from 2010 to date. From 1995, through 2000, 2005 and then 2009, it was gradual, little or no change for both my, uh, groups, marine fishes or all marine animals. Then from 2010 to date, the change has been exponential. That is all marine species and marine fishes on the IUCN red list. Freshwater biodiversity. Freshwater provides several ecosystem services critical for human well being, like recreation, clean water supply, dam irrigation, food, etc. Freshwater lakes, rivers, and ponds cover about 1% of the Earth's surface, but contain 10% of all animals and one third of all vertebrates. The Living Planet Index for freshwater vertebrates population has declined between one third to one fifth. One third of freshwater species are currently threatened. Global freshwater megafauna population declined by 88% from 1970 to 2012. Global freshwater biodiversity is declining rapidly and greater than in terrestrial and marine systems. Globally, wetlands have declined by 75% over the past decades. There's data deficiency in freshwater biodiversity. So what is required is a global systematic approach for collection, collation, assessment, of existing and new data for species within global platform like the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, Fishnet, and others. Changing IUCN status of species. Some species do change their status. According to IUCN, for two reasons, genuine reasons and non-genuine reasons. Genuine reasons in, include no more threat. The species is no longer subjected to any threats, either as a result of a environmental restoration or species introduction, in which case the species improves. Or the species is uh, subjected to continuous unabated threats, in which case it deteriorates in status. The non-genuine reasons include wrong information previously used, 
or new information available or the taxonomy revision of the species, in which case the species is no longer regarded as a single entity. It may have been broken down into subspecies and varieties. Another non genuine reason is that older IUCN version was used in the previous classification. The table shows some examples. Mama, like a black squirrel monkey, has changed from vulnerable to endangered. And the Puerto Rican too has changed from critically endangered, uh, crit uh, critically endangered to endangered. With all these happenings, is sixth mass extinction on the horizon. This is what everybody is asking. Biodiversity pressure. Biodiversity loss is defined by the convention of biodiversity as the long-term or permanent qualitative or quantitative reduction in components of biodiversity and their potential to provide goods and services to be measured at global, regional, and national level. Biodiversity decline and extinction rates are affected by multifaceted threats. And these are put in two groups, the direct drivers and indirect drivers. The direct drivers has been put in decreasing order of importance by the intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem, IPBS 2019, as follows. Habitat alteration as the highest, followed by overexploitation, climate change, pollution, invasive alien species, extinction, and indirect drivers are urbanization, human population increase, rapid economic growth. The factors um, causing biodiversity loss can also be put in two broad groups based on sources, the natural sources and anthropogenic sources. Natural sources include natural climate patterns or weather patterns, extreme events like wildfire, earthquake. Anthropogenic sources are man-made from man-made activities. We have environmental degradation, over-exploitation, climate change as a result of human activities, pollution, invasive species introduction, human population and biodiversity. There's increasing human population and this causes biodiversity change, putting the future of humanity at great risk. Human impact on biodiversity consists of five spheres. Population growth and demographics, urbanization, economic growth, economic development, new technological forces and climate change. This is DAS et al. 2015. To sustain this humongous population, we require commensurate and enormous resources such as food, energy, material or natural resources with their attendant waste generation. We also need land for basic human facilities like schools, housing, hospitals, roads, etc. All these result in habitat destruction, further decimating biodiversity, their processes and services. Population growth coupled with its attendant trajectory of development has been pervasive, spanning colossal loss and extinction of species. This graph shows the relationship between human population and biodiversity uh, extinction. This is taken from Ceballos et al, 2015. The graph shows that human population and the concomitant exponential species extinction occurred from 1900 to date. From the 16th century through 17th century, 18th century, 
19th century, there was little or no change in both parameters, the human population and extinction of uh, species. But from 1900, the 20th century to date, the change has been colossal. It's been very dramatic. Climate change and biodiversity. Climate change is both a cause and effect of biodiversity and ecosystem change. We have here represented schematically pollution, temperature rise, ocean acidification, it is emanating from climate change caused biodiversity loss. Now, the, the absence of biodiversity, there is no removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The suspension of carbon dioxide, a potent greenhouse gas in the atmosphere culminates in climate change. So this is the effect component of the equation and this is the cause component. The climate change as temperature rise, precipitation, precipitation which also modulates climate change, sea level rise, ocean acidification, extreme events, all culminate in biodiversity loss and ecosystem loss, both of which cause ecosystem functions through services loss. The effect of climate change on biodiversity is as follows. Food insecurity, migration, species reduction and extinction, global redistribution of biodiversity, pests, and diseases outbreak increase in frequency and severity, alteration of growth patterns and season, ecosystem tipping point, the threshold of the ecosystem is exceeded, Sintayahu 2018. This global warning is a serious global warm warning. Effects of biodiversity loss are as follows. Food insecurity, disruption of ecosystem function and services, disease outbreak, extinction of species, climate change. What are the solutions to biodiversity loss? Solutions border on anything to prevent, halt, and reverse ecosystem degradation and biodiversity loss. We need to address both direct and indirect drivers. Biodiversity loss at local, national, regional, and global levels, all dimensions of biodiversity to be addressed simultaneously. We should provide biodiversity literacy supported with relevant programs in education. We need bold transformative change predicated on the root causes, which could be social, economic, political, cultural, or environmental, to curb and reverse the current decimation and decline of biodiversity and biodiversity loss calls for a holistic approach, which incorporates IPBS 2019 transformative change spanning political, social, economic, and technological realm economic solutions to biodiversity loss. There are follows. There should be a move towards nature positive economy, a climate resilient green economy, which focuses on adaptation and mitigation to climate change, scaling up of incentives and de-incentivizing anything negatively impacting biodiversity and or climate change. Attach economic incentives to restoration of biodiversity, removing or redirecting economic subsidies, taxation on more environmentally intensive products. This should be proportional. The more intensive, the more the taxation and vice versa. Sustainable products will be made cheaper than unsustainable ones. We put a price on biodiversity loss, OECD 2020. Government to create financial alignment with Paris agreement and nature's SDGs. Engage businesses 
and finance sectors in biodiversity restoration, corporate responsibility of companies in mitigation of climate change, nature impact and nature-based solution, social solutions to biodiversity loss. This includes population control via non-coercive measures like education, family planning, biodiversity citizen science, community involvement in biodiversity conservation matters, involvement of general public in the monitoring of local biodiversity, involvement of children at all levels, family level, school level, as early as possible, traditional knowledge application in biodiversity conservation, change in consumer behavior, reduction of waste of any kind, as all waste have implications for the environment and biodiversity, sustainable use of biodiversity, use of eco-friendly and sustainable products, greening your surroundings, tree planting, gardening, every tree counts in this regard. Political solution to biodiversity loss. Biodiversity policy must be all embracing, transdisciplinary and anticipative. There should be biodiversity mainstreaming in and across all sectors, gender mainstreaming in all policies and programs of biodiversity ensuring coherence across international conventions and national policies on agriculture, forestry, environment development, ETC, pollution reduction, promotion of jobs in biodiversity conservation, ban on wildlife poaching and trafficking, increase in IT targets. Now, over 190 countries met in Aichi in Japan in 2010 to formulate ways to conserve biodiversity. And they agreed on a decade of biodiversity conservation and uh, others. They came up with five goals and 20 targets. Target 11 deals with conservation of biodiversity. And it was put at 17% for terrestrial and inland water and 10% for coastal and marine areas. So researchers think that and suggest that this should be increased from 17% and 10% to between 25 and 75%, Cunningham and Beasley 2018. There should be parallel efforts of UN with a myriad of stakeholders, media, academia, NGOs, CBOs, and so on. Unification of all parties, the CBD, IPBS, UNEP, other UNEP entities and organizations like the NGOs, IUCN, Worldwide Fund for Conservation of Nature. There should be cooperation of diplomats for biodiversity conservation entrench nature and climate in decision making to account for natural capital alongside the physical, financial, and human capital. Technological solutions to biodiversity loss. This is in two folds, the indirect and the direct. The indirect involves the use of technology in assessment, inventory, and tracking of biodiversity. And this includes satellite tracking technology, the use of drones on manned aerial vehicles for monitoring, mapping and restoration, GPS telemetry, remote sensing, use new technologies on species reintroduction, ETC, increasing global pool of data collectors. Example, crowdsourcing this is a situation whereby tourists can snap photos and upload to uh, an app where, where scientists can follow through. The uh, table showing areas and places where these 
various technologies have been deployed will be displayed at the end of the presentation. Direct technological approach includes alternative energy exploitation increases, energy efficient products, technological innovations in agriculture, water security, genetic engineering, environmental solutions to biodiversity loss. This involves tackling biodiversity loss drivers. They are as follows. Sustainability in agriculture, aquaculture, animal husband, the freshwater management, agricultural intensification, integrated agriculture, whereby we have zero waste. The waste from one sector of and the agricultural setup is used in another sector, re resulting in net zero waste. Organic agriculture, improving technology for food production, Mitigation and adaptation of climate change solution, afforestation, agroforestry, establishment of in situ nurseries in the oceans for corals, kelps, and sea grasses, intensification of e efforts on one hand on microorganisms and on the other remote areas. See, these two areas are lagging in data and uh, documentation. The twin environmental crises, climate change and biodiversity loss should be tackled simultaneously. There should be biodiversity conservation. Biodiversity conservation has dual approaches, the in-situ approach and the ex-situ approach. The in-situ approach is dealing with the organism in its natural habitats. Ex-situ approach is off-site of the organism. In-situ approach includes things like sanctuaries, national parks, biosphere reserves, and hotspots, ETC. Ex-situ approach involves zoological gardens, botanical gardens, aquaria, home gardens, biodiversity banks, like seed banks and gene banks. The in-situ places mentioned above are protected areas. These are geographical spaces recognized, dedicated, and managed through legal or other effective means. Environmental degradation and causes. Environmental degradation is a reduction of the capacity of the environment to meet its objective and needs. The causes are as follows, overpopulation, anthropogenic activities, industrialization, pollution, deforestation, desertification, global warming, unsustainable practices in agriculture and aquaculture, overconsumption. What are the consequences of environmental degradation? Increased poverty, scarcity of portable water, overcrowding, farming, or food insecurity, biodiversity stroke processes, uh, stroke services losses, environmental displacement of people, migration, diseases. It's been reported that 24% of global disease burden and 23% of all deaths are caused by environmental factors. This is Tiangi and Podel 2014. In conclusion, Biodiversity still remains the pivot of all United Nations sustainable development goals. Evidence abounds of the biodiversity decline, decimation, or erosion. Global activities result in climate catastrophe leading to planetary emergency and ultimately environmental refugees. A reversal on global ecological crisis status quo needs a collective responsibility. Individuals, communities, businesses, and governments. Coupled with an urgent revolutionary transformative change in its totality. Anna Maria Hernandez, IBPS chair, has aptly captured this transformative change as a transformative change in thinking, action, 
paradigms, institutions, and economies in view of the failed IT targets. Elia said for biodiversity, a forward-looking biodiversity framework that will safeguard biodiversity and future well-being of man is what we now seek. The overall requirements include knowledge-based improvement, correction of past policy failures, and ensuring conservation and sustainable use of resources. There should be upscaling of scientific research complemented by citizen science, a synergy between organizations with similar interests and goals in environmental restoration, biodiversity conservation, and sustainable development, a more comprehensive coordination, coherence, collaboration, effective and sustained initiatives and support from global community, more encompassing biodiversity objectives and establishment of post-2020 global biodiversity framework, a comprehensive agenda incorporating committed leadership, governance, and engagement at all levels be it national, regional, international level, with well-defined and articulated goals, performance indicators, implementation strategy, outcomes and achievement, Edlin 2020. Edlin 2020 also advocates imaging technologies to produce organisms with a radically changed genetic makeup, reinstate to life, species long exist or even create new organisms altogether. But I must add that when doing this, we must be very careful to avoid laboratory mishaps. There should be specific help for developing countries by developed countries with funding to tackle their biodiversity losses and environmental degradation is humanity settling its own fate on ecological survival. Humanity's demand is drastically outstripping nature's supply and ecological footprint, thus plunging us all into ecological debt by using up capital instead of interest. When one runs a business and uses up the capital, the business collapses. Remember, biodiversity is our nature's capital. To pay this ecological debt, a drastic reversal of trend is an imperative. Needed is the removal of human society from this jeopardy by replenishing and halting altogether. Decimation of the finite resources of the planet Earth in order to avert a ghastly future and making us all environmental refugees. We should strive to live in harmony with nature. At this point, don't we need a global or world court? It's my proposition amongst others. Globally, we have two environmental crises, climate change and biodiversity loss. And even with the more popular of the two, climate change, we find lack of commitment from world leaders. In the very recent past, we saw a spectrum of no-show of some prominent world leaders to even semantics, whether it's phase down versus phase out issue, so targets, including biodiversity targets, are not binding on countries. There should be a legal body, just like the World Court. We can call it International Court of Biodiversity Cum Environmental Justice to hold erring countries accountable. I thank you all for listening. <laughs>